We all know that one of the guaranteed ways to trigger Gary is to call the circuit that we put sockets on a ring main. It should more accurately be called a ring final circuit because ring main is a reference to the way transformers are connected together on the distribution network. But whatever you call them, and however you feel about them, there must be millions of them in place around the UK, and people are still installing them now. And as we all know, testing them properly can be a little bit of a pain. You need to do your end-to-end -end test, calculate your expected R1 plus R2 value, then interconnect the line and neutral conductors and go around the circuit, checking at every point. Then come back and interconnect the line and protective conductors, and then go back off again around the circuit, testing at every point to prove the circuit is healthy. All the while juggling numbers in your head and trying to keep track of the figures. It's a nuisance to say the least. And like myself, you may have wondered to yourself as you were working your way around yet another ring final circuit, if only there was an easier way to do this. Well, there is. It's this, the A2214 ring continuity adapter from Metrel, and I'm going to demonstrate to you now how it works using the MI3155. And I'm sure you'll agree that this is a game changer for ring final circuit testing. You'll notice, having laid this out neatly, that there's four pairs of wires. The first pair, which are both black, goes off to the Metrel connector, so we'll connect that to the tester when we start the testing process. Then we've got three pairs of black and red with colour-coded connectors on the end, these being green for connecting to the CPC, blue for the neutral, and of course brown for the connections to the line conductors. Now we can connect either crocodile clips to these or probes, but as you'll see in a moment, we're about to leave this connected up while we wander off around the house testing the sockets, so croc clips are the best bet. I've been sent these ones by our studios in the north, and as you can see, I've got two of these which are brown, so they're going to go onto there, which is really handy. I've also got two which are blue in colour, so they're going to go onto those for the neutral connection. And I've also got uh, one green and two black, which is in no way messing with my OCD, which is absolutely great. The person responsible for this shall remain Gordon. Nameless, sorry, shall remain nameless. We'll just have to use the black ones. Uh, for the CPC connection on this occasion. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to null out the leads on the ring continuity adapter. So we're going to plug it into the top of the Matrel MI3155 to start with, and then we just clip all of the leads uh, to their relevant colours. So here we're going to connect the line conductor connectors together, and it's important when we do that we put them solid jaw to solid jaw, so we're not going to put them like that, we're going to put them like that and that then allows the uh, best connection to be made and will get us the most accurate reading. So then we'll do the same for the CPC connections and then for the neutral connections as well. And then we turn on the ring continuity adapter so we get that red light on there. And then you'll find this test, if we just come out of this menu, in the single tests menu, so you can see it's in single tests, then you press R low, and then you select the ring continuity test. Now it may be worth noting at this point, if you can't find this option on your MI3155, uh, you may need a firmware upgrade, and that's really simply done. Uh, if you contact Matrel, they'll send you the relevant information, uh, and I managed to do it, so it's pretty straightforward there. So we've got those connected, and then we press this button here, it's showing us at the minute that this is not calibrated, pressing that button takes us into the calibration menu. And what it's doing now is it's just checking the resistance of those leads and making sure that we're gonna get a good reading. So that's now set those leads to a value of zero and we're ready to start the actual test. Okay, so this is the consumer unit that we're gonna demonstrate this on. You can see I've got it switched off and safely isolated, although the incoming meter tails are still live, but there's no lockable isolator further upstream from here. So uh, for me, I'm quite happy with the, the level of risk involved here and the level of safety, but of course, if you do something a little bit differently, then please do let me know in the comments below. I know I can lock this room and control the key uh, for that lock, so no one's gonna come in and accidentally poke anything in there, and I'm not gonna be able to stick my fingers in there because it's IP2X, so I'm not gonna be able to access those terminals. But as I say, if you've got additional measures you'd take, please feel free to comment those below. And if you're interested in safe isolation and how to achieve it, please check out our free training package over on the know-how page of efix.co.uk or by clicking a link in the description below. But enough of that, let's get on to the test. So this is where the ring continuity adapter really comes into its own because we've got the option up here, you can see this is the 
uh, ring final circuit that I've split into the two legs. So that's one leg at the top there and that's one leg at the bottom. And because we've got these colour coded uh, leads on here, what that means is that I can actually uh, connect onto the, the correct leads. So I'm going to put all of the black conductors to the leg that I've moved to the top of the board there. So they're going to go at the top and all of the red ones will go at the bottom. So you can see here I've got the green uh, probes here which are connecting onto the CPCs. So again we'll get the black neutral lead and put that onto the neutral at the top and then we'll get the red one and put that onto the neutral at the bottom if we can find our way to it there. And then we've also got uh, the red line conductor which will go onto the bottom terminal and then the black line lead which will go onto the red one at the top there so that's all good so now if i just move these uh, the wires off the front of the tester there and make sure that we've got the ring continuity adapter switched on you can see that now we're in a position where we can just press the test button and do the test and what this is going to do it's going to measure our end-to-end -end values for us so we can either hit the run button or the play button on the touch screen and what that's doing now is it's measuring the resistance of those conductors and it's going to return a value to us for those end-to-end -end values so we've got r1 as 0.47 rn which is the neutral at 0.47 so that's the line and the neutral conductors are the same value which you'd expect them to be because they're the same size conductors and then we've got R2 at 0.8 ohms, and that's higher because the cross-sectional area of the CPC is smaller, meaning that it's got a higher resistance. Okay, so now we've got that hooked up, what we're actually going to do now is we're going to unplug the tester from the ring continuity adapter, and then we're going to go out and do some testing, but not before we've done one more step of zeroing a lead. Let's do that now. Okay, so in a moment we're going to go off and test at the sockets, so what we'll need to do is change the test parameter now to R1 plus Rn and R1 plus R2. So you can see there we're now going into the next phase of the test. So that's all good, so we're happy with that. You can see down the bottom here now, we're going into a different test mode and it's actually done the calculation here for us for the expected reading. So can you see there it's done R1 plus Rn divided by four, which gives us 0.23. And here we've done R1 plus R2 divided by four, which is 0.32. So these are the readings that we should be getting as we go around to each individual socket and test. Of course, this, if we get one reading that's quite a lot higher than the others, then we know that we've got pretty much uh, a nailed on spur. And then if we find another one sort of somewhere in the locality of that one that's even higher, it's likely we've got a spur off a spur. So that would obviously lead to some problems. But can you see there we've gone back to a calibration uh, with an X there. So what we need to do now is we need to calibrate the test lead that we'll be plugging in to each individual socket. So again, we just connect this into the top here. So we plug that into the connector at the top of the matrill. And then on the front of the ring continuity adapter, we're just gonna leave this hooked up as it was in the previous step. But on the front, there's this socket. So if I just move that cable out of the way, you can see that there. And that is just a shorting socket that is gonna allow for the calibration. So there's no connection inside the test unit between that socket and those leads. It's just simply here as uh, a calibration point to set this lead to zero now. Uh, Matrell also do another version of this that's just a, a standalone little unit, but of course it's built into this one. So we'll just plug this in here. So we'll plug that into there like that. And then again, press the calibrating button. And that's now just setting the resistance of that test lead to zero. You could see there that we would have been getting 0.22 added onto all of our readings, but now that's set to zero. So now we can unplug this from here and then we can go out to the rest of the circuit and we can start testing at the individual points. So let's go and do that. Now for this next stage, you can either use leads plugged in here with probes attached, which can be handy if you're measuring to an accessory wired off the ring, such as a fan or something like that. Or you can use a lead with a plug already connected for normal socket outlets. Uh, obviously, if you're going to change the connection method that you're making, then you need to re-zero uh, your conductors to make sure that you're getting accurate readings. Now, one of the really clever things about this device is that you only need to go to each socket once. So if we plug in there and then hit the run button, you can see there that that's gonna do the test. And back at the mains where we've got the connection made, that little uh, adapter there actually changes the connection between line and neutral and then line and CPC. And the tester will then test between line and neutral 
and test between line and CPC. So all of those interconnections that you'd have to keep going backwards and forwards to the board from are all done by that test adapter that we've left there. And now we only need to do the test once at each socket and we've got our readings. You can see they're 0.22 and 0.33. So let's just plug into another socket over here and check what readings we're getting. Make sure that we're switched on. Hit the uh, play button for the next one. So you can either hit the run button or the little play button here and it'll carry out all those tests again at the next socket outlet. And hopefully you can see there we're getting similar readings to what we had before. And we can also compare them down here with our expected readings that we calculate. And you can see they're pretty close. Uh, what you might find is that the line and CPC one uh, does change a little bit as you go around the circuit uh, because the CPC has a smaller cross-sectional area which does kind of affect the readings. If you've ever wondered about this divide by four uh, function and why we do that bit of the calculation why we divide by four to find the reading that we get when we cross connect then watch out for a Q&A video that we've made on this that helps to explain that with a kind of uh, a physical demonstration of what we're doing so that you can see how that works so there we go now it's just a matter of carrying around the circuit and finding our readings and if there's anything suspicious we'll find it so there we go that's the Matrell ring continuity adapter I think it's just brilliant and another one of those products that I just wish had been around 20 some years ago because it definitely makes electricians lives easier and we like that at eFix now if you're interested in ring final circuits in general then please do go and check out our free training package that we've made on this subject to help you with your CPD. You'll find that in the link below or over on the know-how page of efix.co.uk. But as always, we want to hear from you. Will this be on your to-buy list moving forward? Do you think we'll see ring final circuits being installed for a long time to come? Or do you think that perhaps they've had their day? Whatever your thoughts, whatever your questions, please leave them in the comments section below. And as always, thank you very much for watching.